Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our next team training and inspiration call. This one is very exciting because some of us just got back from gold school. And this is the first gold school that I have ever been to, as well as Corky and her level one, Kelly Alley and um, Amanda Boz um, on Noelle's team up in Canada, which was very cool. There was a group of Canadians there, a whole table full of Canadians. So that was really fun um, for her to connect with them. And they ended up like sitting right behind us, which was really cool. Um, but this was a really wonderful opportunity to be in a pretty intimately sized room when you compare it to something like leaders retreat or convention, but have a wide range of ranks, leadership ranks. Um, I was talking to another diamond about how gold school went. And I said, it was so neat to look at kind of a small banquet room and every table had one or two diamonds at it with like a few of their leaders who are really successful in this season and, and work their way to gold school. So that was really neat. Um, and at the end, there were so many diamonds there that impromptu, they called up all the diamonds to the front and did a and a for quite a long time. I want to say it was like 30 to yeah. 40 minutes. It was a lot. Um, and anybody who felt like they had something to offer or wanted to answer the question or address something could. And so all these different diamonds chimed in with their personal experience, what they do on their team, what works for them, solutions and things like that. So that was that was a really neat kind of impromptu way to end um, the whole gold school training. And the things that they went over were great because either they reinforced things that we talk about on this team or they kind of shed new light on things that we maybe have heard before or haven't reflected on in a while. There was good mindset work and good practical work with some takeaways. And, and I even had a couple of people ask me, you know, you've probably heard this stuff before, you know, did you feel like it was anything new? And I said, absolutely. There was definitely things here and there and stuff that I learned from the trainers and things that even Genevieve said um, that I took away and really realized that I need to either work on or improve or do more effectively and efficiently, um, or pertaining to so many different things. And there was good, there were good workshops and exercises and like little breakouts, um, in the middle of the day, which broke it up because it was an all day training. But what we're going to do tonight is give some of our takeaways from gold school. And we're going to hear from Corky and hopefully Amanda Boz hops on. Uh, I'll give my takeaways. Um, Kelly Alley is not here because she got to spend an extra couple of days with her college roommate that she has not seen since 1991. How cool they connected in Austin. And so, um, she is flying home. So keep her in your prayers for safe travels back home. Um, but, um, uh, if you want to chat with her about her experience on her first gold school, definitely connect with her. So who we'll hear from first is Corky. So she's going to give her things that stood out to her, um, you know, her learnings, and then hopefully, um, pass along maybe one action item or a couple action items that she is using moving forward and things that she's actually doing to change um, the way she does things in her business. So Corky, you take it away. Okay. Um, first of all, I guess I would just say that do what you got to to get to gold school. Um, Kelly and I actually qualified for the first one. I, she, when I was helping her go gold, it was over a year ago and she got it the first class and we couldn't go. Like she had like family trips. I have stuff. So I feel like it was actually better that we got to go now. I feel like it was really God's timing. I thought it was great because to have Allie there and another team member was really fun. And then to be part of the rise bigger team. Um, it was awesome to have that time together, especially when you think about that, we were all kind of in that mode of leadership and, and wanting to promote forward. Uh, I want to say a couple things about people on our team. First off, Allie kind of touched on this, but um, after it ended, her and I were sitting kind of holding spots while people went, got food, and she asked me what I thought. And I have a big belief that you can always learn something in a training, even if you've been there a hundred times and you think you know it all. If you go with an open mind, you're going to get at least one new thing, a, a piece of information that's helpful. And what I actually said to her was, I mean, there's a ton of stuff. I mean, this book, I just, you know, it's full of notes. I, when I sat down to write for you guys, I have like three pages, you know I mean? There was tons of good stuff. But what I said to her was, I feel like a really big takeaway was, I think it's great when you get training that reaffirms that you're doing the right things, you're on the right track. And what I meant by that is, 
there was a huge focus on what they call the winning day, which is our plexus day. And uh, I remember, and I'm sure like if you guys remember this, when you started doing the power half, half hours and hours with Allie, she was in a test group with Jen, Jen Via then. And she was like, hey, I want to try this. I want you guys to try it with me. So Allie has been training us on this for quite some time. So to us, it seems super normal because we do it and we've done it as team members for the team. But there was probably what, Allie, like three, four hours of training on the winning day. And yeah, right. I mean, that's the thing. And, you know, I wrote a lot of notes, even though we do it. Um, the difference is she breaks it down into a different time frame. She has it so that you're doing two hours of work a day. Um, and then she says, you know, if you can't do that, you break it down, break it down, break it down. But she, of course, wants the consistency. So um, I just found that interesting. And I think we should all be really happy and excited that we have a big jump on what the company, because they took that test pilot program that Allie was in. And now they that's what's become the gold school training, you guys. We've all been doing that for almost, what, two years now? So that is, I think, a big kudos to Allie and the training and the stepping out with a new idea that we all have. And I think that we should be really happy and proud and thank her for training us in that way. So I want to do that. Um, and the other thing that stood out to me, there was at one point, I mean, like I said, the day went on forever. Um, and she said that, let me find it. I had, I wrote myself a note that we need to have it. I, I mean, I can generalize it, but that we need to become educators of health. She goes, that doesn't mean we have to be doctors and nurses. She goes, I don't even want you to do that. She goes, because if you do that, it makes it look too hard. And someone's going to look at you and go, oh my goodness, I can't do that because I'm not a nurse. I don't know all the things. But I thought of both you, Erica, and you, Ruby, because you are, and you have such a science background and you have such a great approach in how you put that, that's your authentic you. That's how you put it out. And that's so important. And they stress that. But what she was saying for the general of us that maybe don't have you guys' as science backgrounds is that take the approach to educate people on all the things that have to do with gut health, not, not just when someone's sick. She goes, right now we need to change the focus from looking for sick people to looking for everybody. And how we do that is in how we talk to people. Like, don't just say, oh, you have this problem, gut health will help with that. Talk about you know, how you feel great. And you know, that's because your gut's balance. It's, it's a mind shift. She wants us all to be making um, because she feels that casts a bigger net and gives us better opportunity to work with more people. But you guys being, having that science background, that's authentic to you. And that's why people respond because you, you know, you know that and you can talk to them in those terms. Um, the other thing that I felt like she really stressed, and I don't know if Allie will agree with this, but that she really, multiple times talked about of course being authentic we've hear that all the time but she said you have to be emotional she goes you need to start being emotional you need to start being authentically emotional like so that they can feel you that they can feel your heart and she goes and that starts with the way you verbalize the words that you use and like the example she gave this was just one she gave was that she goes think about like if you're someone who has been wearing stretchy pants for years now because one, either you're hurting and you can't, or two, you're too heavy and you can't get into zipper pants. She goes, that's an emotion a lot of people can relate to. She goes, if you talk about, oh my goodness, I'm so excited because I'm wearing zipper pants for the first time in five years or whatever it is. She goes, people are going to relate to that as opposed to, oh, I've lost weight. She goes, you have to get to the emotion. You have to hit them in their Feel, feelings. So um, I thought that was really interesting. Um, oh gosh, I got lost, but I can't tell it all because everybody else has to talk. But um, the other thing that I thought was really great, and we again, I feel like we've kind of been talking about this, is that she said, okay, when you send a text or messenger message, she goes, I send it to Allie and she reads it. But when she reads it, she's reading it in her own voice through her own lens. And it could be completely different than how you intended her to hear it or send it to her. So she says, number one, 
you should always try and be in front of people. Very always. If, if, if you can in any way, shape or form, you want to be in front of them. She goes, number two, video. Number three, do the voice thing. And she goes, last and hardly ever do a text. She goes, you need to get out of that habit. She goes, you have to get back to being personal. And, you know, I think we've all, been, like I said, been kind of doing that. But she was really stressing that. And again, that's where it gets back into. I think we've got great training. A um, couple more things and then I'll shut up so everybody else can talk. But um, <laughs> this one kind of hit me <laughs> really personally because I've used the word a few times in my <laughs> Plexus career, the word inflammation. We're not supposed to be using that. That's a big no-no word for us. And uh, so she's like, uh, you cannot be using that word. And she said, that's for one thing, it's too general. And for another, it gets into uh, a medical thing that we're not supposed to be talking about. So someone yelled out from the crowd, what about puppiness? And she goes, well, if you feel like you have to say that, she goes, you might be able to get away with that one. But again, she talked about emotion. She thought, she said, talk about like a memory or an emotion that you felt because of inflammation. And that way they can attach that feeling to themselves. She said, even if you have to say, oh, friend of mine that I know, her body's, you know, she's been in so much pain for so many years and now she isn't, you know, something to that effect. Um, anyway, I got way more, but I'll shut up so someone else can talk. Oh my gosh, so good. It, there are literally so many notes, you guys. Um, I love the things that you pointed out because a, a couple of those were like not my main points. I was like, oh, that's really neat that those were like the her top of mind things. Um, the discussion, you guys, around compliant posting was really a topic, but it was more uh, posting with feeling, posting with story, posting with emotion, um, posting to grab attention and relatability. And that big example was like, inflammation. How often did you use the word inflammation before you were with Plexus, you know? And it was like, maybe a few of us because of specific personal experience or education, the greater public audience that might not be a word that is in their vernacular, right? However, they might be feeling puffy or lacking confidence or not liking when they see pictures of themselves or really uncomfortable, finding it difficult to do daily tasks, finding it really hard to get out of bed in the morning without a really long time of slowly rolling out and having to stretch. Whereas now after using Plexus, they can jump out of bed and feel good, right? So that whole conversation about that was eye-opening um, and helpful to just really change the way we think about things. And, and you know, people would raise their hand and say, what about, um, you know, when I feel this way or, you know, when I'm feeling like I do need to lose weight or my pants are too tight or whatever, what's a way we can post about that? And she's like, well, how do you feel when your pants are too tight? Are you uncomfortable? Are you embarrassed? Do you have confidence? Do you want to be seen in photos? Do you want to leave the house? Do you feel proud of your outfit? Like all these things. And we were like, well, no, okay, let's like translate that into emotion. Right. So it was this whole workshopping of, okay, I want to tell this story but how do I feel in that moment? How would someone else feel going through that thing? Um, and allowing that to relate to them instead of just using facts, right? It's whole, it's the whole like facts sell, stories tell or something, whatever. Facts, what has it go? Stories sell, facts stories tell, sell. Stories sell. That's how it goes, yeah. Um, so it's that whole thing where it's like your stories are what's gonna really sell the product for you, not facts and figures and things. Um, and so using more emotional language was a huge conversation. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because I was like, oh, that's right. We did spend like 45 minutes talking about that. <laughs> um, and so that was, that was really good. And also being that aggregate aggregator of information. And I put it in the chat, but one of the quotes says, you are not the author. You are the librarian. It is okay to pass along the info, to take someone's requests and needs and wants and, you know, desires and seek out the information that can best help them and be very transparent that you are not the originator of that information. You're not the originator of that knowledge. Um, maybe you are for, you know, for some things, um, but understanding that you don't have to be the knower of all the things to be successful, nor should you try to be the knower of all the things to be successful, because that's really not duplicatable very well. But if we get into that, um, 
rhythm of feeling like we need to know all the things, it can really block us from doing the things that we don't know, or, um, it can really produce fear. So, um, I love that. I just, all the things Kirby said, I was like, yeah, yeah. Forgot about that. Um, so anyway, I, that was kind of a lot, but I was just piggybacking all the things I loved about what Corky just said. Um, next we're going to hear from Amanda Boz, which I'm so excited to hear what she has to chat about. She was sitting on the other side of me, um, the whole day. And so we got to bounce ideas off each other and chat about things and workshop stuff together. And, and it was a really wonderful experience. And I had a great time just being next to her, um, for the entire day. It was such a treat. So I just love that. Um, so Amanda, I'll let you take it away and share your tips and takeaways. Um, first of all, it's so sweet of you to say it was so much fun being there. I agree. Sit next to each other and just like bouncing all the ideas off each other. It's very necessary. It was so good. We need to do more things like this. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm sorry. I missed the first part of the meeting. I have a little five month old baby and you know, yeah, you know how that goes. Seasons of life. Um, I hope I'm not going to be overlapping too much of what Corky said, because I didn't, I didn't hear all of it. Um, but I will still, um, share my top takeaways of what I got. So one thing that really stuck out to me was, um, in our little booklet, they describe what a possible gold team looks like, and that's you plus your 20 level ones. And then it shows what, you know, a better team would look like, and it's you and your four VIP customers, and each of them have their own four people. So I'm, and I, I don't know about what the rest of your teams look like, but I know for me to get two gold, I think I did kind of half and half. It was all like running by myself, adding all my team members, my VIPs and whatnot. And it was exhausting. <laughs> it was tiring. And, and before you even get to your goal, you're already burnt out and you're already tired. Um, and then thankfully, right towards the end of that, I feel like Marisa came on. Um, you've probably all seen her name keep popping up and she just like took off. So finding your one, two, three, four runners. Like that's all, that's all. You just need to get your people working their business, sharing with their moms and their cousins and their aunts and everything. And um, that really stuck out to me because it only took four people with four people underneath them to get to the same team that you built with yourself adding 20 people. It's just ridiculous, the comparison. So that was one thing. The other thing was, um, let me find my notes back here was um a lot of the the speaking to people's pain points that what a lot of what Corky said was something that really really struck home really felt right um the other thing is curating your your message they say stop looking for sick people that was a quote but what you're looking for you're not you're not looking for the minnows don't wait for your minnows to grow up <laughs> you want to go for the big um bass right now so your message needs to be kind of um, aimed towards them as well so that's something that really made me go through my posts and like rethink how how I was speaking to my audience because I do feel like a lot of times that's what I'm doing I'm like well you you don't feel well now you need to feel well and this is how you do it but it's more than that it's the business side of things it's the people who know that they're missing something but also like just have this desire in them to do more and you don't have to be the one to light that flame in them if they already have it so that's something too um, I think I only had one other main point, um, the don't oversell your results and downplay the effort required to get there was a big one too. Cause we want to tell people like, oh, it's so easy. Like you just do this and you're going to feel better and you're going to do better and you're going to make money. It's not like that. They don't see all the behind the scenes stuff that we're doing. Like right now <laughs> meeting, they don't see us sitting down for whatever it is, hour, half hour, hour and a half every day making sure that we're making our lists, that we're getting our IPAs done, that kind of stuff. Like, um, don't oversell results and downplay the effort. Like, that was something that, again, made me rethink how I was doing business. Um, other than that, I think just attending gold school with people who are doing the same thing as you was just so cool and so life bringing. It was um, very inspirational because uh, while I was there over the weekend, I got my two people. <laughs> And then today I signed my third <laughs> idea and I got there. And it's a big deal because I haven't had anybody join my team personally in months. So this is a big deal and I'm really, really happy to celebrate it. And it was like absolutely because I got this opportunity to be among all these like people who raise you up and do this with you. So that's something else too. just 
surround yourself with people who light that fire within you as well. It makes such a difference. Um, yeah, I think that was most of what I wanted to say because Corky said the rest of the stuff, the, the emotional stuff that really, really got to me as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all I got to say. Thanks, Sally. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda, and huge congratulations on getting your third. I have not seen that come in, so yay! Yay, yay, yay. It was, you guys, it was so fun. I was sitting next, we we're, no, you sang your first one. I don't know. We were like in the living room or something. And she's like, I just signed somebody. And we were like playing a dice game or something. And we're like, wait, what? Like Amanda just signed somebody. And everybody in the room is like, yeah. you know, we had like 20 people just like, go. Amanda. And then we're sitting in gold school and she's like, you know, being real serious. And I'm like, what's going on over there? And she's like, I just signed my second one. And I'm like, that is amazing. Like, oh my gosh, she's sitting here, just fired up, working hard, like doing the things. Um, and like, how's that for like taking it and executing immediately? Um, hi, baby. Um, was and didn't so, they make us reach out? Like, didn't we have like yes, 10 minutes? Yes, we did she reach out. Actually do reach outs. Like, yes, we had 10 minutes school. of doing reach outs, um, you know, voice messages and stuff, which was so cool. Um, and they celebrated when you get a no, right? If you get a no, or if you get a yes, like stand up and say, I got a no, or I got a yes. And what was cool is there was hundreds, there were hundreds of people. And so we're all getting busy, you know, working like we know how, and across the room, somebody would be like, I just got a no, or I just got a yes, or she just wants more info. And it's like, the room is just like, yeah, like every time. So for 10 minutes, it was so exciting. It felt like those old school, like telethons. Like, but everybody like was popping up like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was really cool. That was a very energetic part of the day. Uh, yeah. On PBS, like, you know, it felt like we were in a room of something like that, like you're we answering phone calls or something. Um, but it was great because we took time to curate a message. Like we really took the time to formulate a message that we could either, you know, say or record or whatever. And the anatomy of that was so simple. Um, you know, we went over posting and adding value and engaging and stuff like that it was a huge chunk of the training. And then it went right into, okay, how do we make a connection with these people? And the three pieces of the message were really empathize with them. So like notice, I see that you're a busy mom like me, right? Or whatever, right? Whatever you can relate to um, or that a friend can relate to. That was the thing. I saw you post about, this, you know, my friend Becca also struggled with that, you know, whatever the thing is, empathy, lead with empathy, um, and also relate to the emotion of that. I can absolutely understand how that feels to, you know, not feel confident when you see yourself in photos. You know, I remember when I used to feel that way or whatever. Um, and then follow up with just a no pressure ask, right? I don't know if this is a good fit for you or not, but how open are you to exploring this as an opportunity to find relief in that area? You know, and so it's very simple. The structure of the message was so simple. And I think a lot of us can overthink it. Um, thankfully, like Corky was saying, this is something that we've been practicing as a team for a really long time. But I still, I still sometimes overthink my messages, you know, and in going through the framework line by line by line. And in a room full of people who are also trying to really craft these messages that are going to feel simple um, and not overselling anything and relatable and personal um, and then actually going out and doing it. Like right after we talked about it, it was like, okay, you've got 10 minutes, go send your three messages or whatever. Um, I can't remember, maybe it wasn't three messages. It was just like message for three minutes or 10 minutes or something. And it was just going for no, right? And statistically, if you're going for three no's a day or three messages a day, you should have one new potential by the end of the week. Um, and I think we all know that, right? And even if we know it, we may or may not be doing it, right? Preaching to the choir here. I I see that too, right? I try to do my do my best on the power hours and things, but sometimes, you know, Friday at two o'clock hits me and I'm like, I don't need to finish my reach outs. You know, like I've been there, I've been there and I, I know how that is. Um, and so we need to focus on adding value in a relatable, very emotional, emotionally driven way that speaks to the general public, right? Granted, in your ICA, in your ideal customer, um, but isn't using terms that will close off some of the population, right? And understanding that specific language or even diagnoses or 
um, I don't know, any kind of those like non-compliant words, right? Somebody who sees that might be like, oh, I don't struggle with that scroll on by, or I'm unfamiliar with that scroll on by. But something they may be familiar with is the discomfort, the fatigue, um, the sadness, the struggle sleeping, you know, um, the worried feeling, the, you know, the all the things, the, the emotional language. So um, leading with that kind of language and then following up with um, reach out messages and in voice messages specifically, um, or, you know, videos or get on the phone or whatever you can do um, to really speak to them in a way that is um, relating to them and not simply asking if they want to see what you have to offer, you know, um, how can it benefit them and, and make them feel seen? That was, that was huge. Like they, people want to feel seen and heard and empathized with. Um, before they ever want to purchase something, um, especially in a in a business such as ours, when which is very personal, it's a very personal journey for someone to open up about their wellness and their struggles. Um, so that was a, another huge portion of the day uh, that I just really really appreciated her going into depth. Genevieve taught this part, um, really going into depth about things that I could have walked in there and been like, I know all this, I've been hearing this for years, but. It, it was such good reminders. And even some of the questions people were asking, you know, they would, it, the, the floor was open for someone to say, okay, I have this gal that I've been watching post about this thing and I don't know how to relate to her. I don't know what to say to her. What language should I use? And having somebody like Genevieve on the spot being like, here's what I would say. And she's like, okay. And goes and reaches out to the person. And then she's like, oh my gosh, she wants more information. Like they're actively during the event. Like it was just cool. It was just cool to be a part of. Um, in a room full of people doing that. And um, so that was really, really special. And I guess I'll stick with winning day stuff for right now um, of things that I kind of pulled out. Um, one of the big takeaways for me and my own personal, like personal development journey <laughs> was that um, perfection is not the point, right? We're going to learn by doing. And I think we hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. I tell myself that all the time. And I still struggle with that. This needs to be the perfect message. It has to be the perfect time. I have to have so many interactions before I reach out to the person, you know? And if we are feeling like we truly can be of service to someone, then we need to just take that leap and be willing to be uncomfortable, maybe be willing to stumble over our language um, and our verbiage and maybe kind of like, say the wrong thing or, you know, not do our best work so that we can learn from that and put ourselves out there so that they can see that our heart is really to serve them and that we see a need. It's like, see a need, fill a need. Right. Um, and having that posture about it and not worrying so much about our own personal image and taking that, um, I don't want to use the term selfishness, but I lack, I can't think of the right word right now, but um, taking the focus off of ourselves and keeping them as the hero of the story, you know, and I don't know if you guys have read or listened to building a story brand um, by Donald Miller, but he talks all about this and how making um, them the hero of the story is the key throughout your conversation, not just posting. Yes, posting, yes, branding, yes, communication, but throughout um, their communication with you, you are remaining as the guide right? And getting rid of um, our feelings of uncertainty and like, what are they going to think of me? Am I going to say the right thing? You know, and just really overthinking that. Keep it super simple. How can I relate to them? How can I empathize with them? Um, where is a pain point that I could help um, help them see relief? And understanding that none of us is ever going to be perfect at doing any of the things. We just need to get out and do them. And sometimes we are going to be embarrassed and sometimes we're going to screw it up. And sometimes we're going to vomit plexus on someone and we're going to look back and be like, Ooh, not my best work, you know, but move on and do better in the future. So, um, that, that was big in that whole first part of like showing up online, marketing, reaching out, communicating with people, um, posting all of that. Um, and along the, the follow-up portion of the winning day, uh, I, I kind of forgot that she kind of lumps customers and potentials in with the follow-up. Like that's all, all one category basically for like an hour or 45 minutes of your time. It is, she phrased it as moving each person to the next micro commitment. So what is that for them? Is if, if it's a potential, is it another exposure opportunity? Is it 
finally trying their sample? Is it ordering? Is it going to an event? Like what is the next thing, right? If they are someone on your team, what is the next piece of that for them? Is it starting their products? Is it um, a, a regimen tweak that you're, you know, want them to do? Is it getting better with their water intake? Is it taking their before photos before they start their products? You know, maybe it's putting their first post up if you're at that point, you know, is it inviting to an event? What is their next micro commitment? Um, and that was a good way to look at a follow-up, I thought. Um, and just communication in general, like, okay, what is the next step towards success that I can guide this person? Like, how can I do that? Um, no matter where they are on the spectrum. And so that was, that was good. And that's a lot, lot, that's a big chunk of um, our work time, you know, is moving people to their next micro commitment toward success with Plexus. Um, and, you know, we went over verbiage for helping people get their products paid for, which we've done a lot, um, or presenting the opportunity to people. Um, I think that this was such a good reminder of why getting people to events, why they're in person, either in person or virtual is so important, but big time in-person events. I mean, I'm going to do everything I stink and can to be at the next bold school. Um, and I know that Corky and Kelly and Amanda would echo the same thing. I mean, if I can work my tail off to get to the next gold school or a gold school in the near future, um, I'm absolutely going to do that because it was so, so valuable. Um, and the belief building that happens, the community building that happens is just the edifying that happens in a room like that is just palpable. Like it is amazing. Um, it's all the really fun, exciting parts of something like when you go to convention or something and you're just like on cloud nine, but intimate, like so intimate. Um, and you're sitting with leaders who are excelling and super successful to the left and the right of you. At one point they had people stand up who had earned um, Punta Cana already. And there was like a ton of people there. I was like, whoa, whoa. Like I thought it was like a couple people. No, it's like a bunch of people and a bunch of them were at gold school. Um, and I know that wasn't everybody. You know, and it was like golds, you know, like it, they were like iron Putagana already. And like, that is amazing and extremely impressive and reminds you that like, we can get out there and make it happen. Um, and uh, showing up well and consistently was a theme throughout that I noted um, was like this winning day format, the Plexus day format is wonderful and great to follow and a great checklist. But if we're doing it like once a week, it's not really going to, I mean, it might have some impact, but not the greatest impact. Right. Um, but committing to doing it, you know, four or five days a week for 90 days on end or indefinitely in your business, like that's where the magic really, really happens when people have repeated exposure to those really valuable pieces of information or those heartfelt messages or those, you know, multiple exposure opportunities, um, remembering that it's showing what up well daily consistently over time, that is really going to make the biggest difference. So, Cause I think we can all get off the call and be like, I'm going to go make this fantastic post tomorrow morning. And then we go right back into like, here's why chromium helps with blood sugar. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's great and everything. And like, if someone really wants that information, we absolutely have that for them, but that might not be the one, the thing that's going to speak to our larger audience and really hit them in the feels. Right. Um, so just reminding ourselves to, to continue to show up in the best way that we're learning how to do. Um, but let's see, I'm going like now I'm in this spot where I have all this list of these emotions that we could experience. So here's some examples of words we came, we came up with miserable, disappointed and how you're showing up for your family tired, exhausted, embarrassed, lacking confidence, um, sad, overwhelmed, frustrated, unrecognizable in photos. Like these are some of the people were like, what could we say instead? And everybody started shouting out, shouting out stuff. Um, uh, feeling like you need to nap if you're super tired, um, uh, you know, upset that I'm not showing up better or as well as my family needed me to be. I mean, these are such visual language, such illustrative language. I just, I absolutely love that. Um, and remembering that we want to be using a photo or video or boomerang or whatever in our content that we would want to stop our scroll and look at, right? So remember to not just throw something up. Um, and if anything, use a picture of your face. 
when in doubt, a photo of your face is going to do better than like any graphic because people with faces <laughs> are drawn to other people's faces, <laughs> which is pretty much everybody, right? <laughs> so um, just remember that, you know, when you're posting and using feeling words. But um, I guess sort of the last couple of things I want to mention is that I love that we started with vision casting. The very first thing we did was we basically did introductions and Alec and, and Jean were there speaking and, and that was great to see them. Um, but the very first thing we did was get clear on our current why. So our current vision, um, why we want to show up for this season in our business. Um, and also even putting a dollar amount of in this current season, an extra blank amount of money per month could change my life. And why, why would that change my life? Why would that amount of money right now, this month change my family or my experience or, you know, my giving or, you know, whatever that might be, or my kids or community or whatever. Um, and what do I really want from this business? You know, what do I want? And it's okay to have that change. It's okay if that's different next year or next month, what do I want from this business? Um, and then the next, I love the next question. What do I want from this business? And then when do I want it? So when do I want that by how much time can I commit to making that happen? Right. That's a truly reflective question, right? Especially for all of us who are super busy doing all the things. Um, that like took me a long time to answer, you know, cause I was like, okay, am I not committing enough time? Like how much time should I be committing? I totally overthink everything. And so I was like taking a long time to finish this, but, um, you know, what do I want to change for me and my family? And then what I, have I been wanting to do, but have not, because I think I have a lack of time, money, community, or health. What have I been wanting to do, but haven't, because I think I lack the time, money, community, or health. That is a huge question as well. And I feel like every one of those areas could, you could have a ton of reflection. Um, but that was good. That was the very first exercise we did. We took several minutes and just went through that. And like, what do I want out of this day? And what from this day do I want to be able to put into practice? Um, and that segued directly into us doing a little mindset inventory, you know, um, am I of a fixed mindset that is avoiding challenges or seeing my efforts as fruitless or ignoring constructive criticism or being threatened by the success of other people? Or am I in a growth mindset that is embracing challenges and seeing efforts as a path to mastery in different areas, right? Being okay with failing forward, learning from criticism and being inspired by the success of others. You know, there's two sides of that coin and we chatted about that a little bit at the table. And I was like, man, I think I fall somewhere in the middle of that. Like some of these things are hard for me. Other things I've learned to be better at. Um, and I think I didn't know that I felt that way, you know, until I wrote it down. I was like, oh gosh, I guess I, I am kind of falling into the fixed mindset in some of those things. Um, and like when you see everybody stand up in the room that has earned Punta Cana already being like, that is amazing. And you could either be super threatened like she can do it, but not me, like good for her. Right. Or you can say, look at these people go. I can absolutely get out there and do that too. And so, um, that was cool to just kind of reflect on how, what, what was my instantaneous reaction to that? You know, like what was my trigger reaction to seeing that? And I found that personally, I was like, oh, if they can do it game on, you know, um, which was cool. And then your leadership saying, seeing whether, you're a reactive leader or a proactive leader and a reactive leader we said has no clear plan, maybe just spinning your wheels, but lack of vision. Um, maybe a little bit of a victim mentality, like things are happening to me. Um, of course, some things are out of your control, right? But a lot of things are in our control. And <laughs> this one was funny. Doesn't know where the time goes. Where does the time go? Time flies. I have no idea what I'm doing with my time. I run out of time all the time. Um, and that's something I used to struggle with big time. Um, and saying yes to everything, you know, being everywhere for everybody, for all the things all the time um, can really put us in a state of being reactive instead of proactive. And the flip side of that was planning ahead, time blocking, 
know what to expect and preparing for the situations that you're putting yourself in. Um, you know, follow your daily and week weekly, um, they call them SOPs, which are standard operating procedures, but like your IPAs or your structure, whatever that is, right? Um, do the things that work on a daily and consistent basis and saying no more, saying, you know, this is a boundary for me. I'm not going to show up for that or I'm unavailable for that or I've already blocked this time for this other thing that is important to me um, and really allowing or allowing your calendar to show your priorities. Um, and that was a big kind of reflection point as well. Um, and the last thing that we went over in this sort of reflection period at the very start was um, the culture that we're creating on our teams or with our customers, right? Um, you know, I think even without leaders or business builders, you can sort of decide where your value lies, right? Is it only when they lose 10 pounds or are we celebrating that they got all their water in today, right? Is it the is it the progress and growth that we're celebrating or is it only the big things that we're celebrating? And and um, huge area of reflection for me, right? Just like what sort of culture do I want this team to have and do I want us to have? And, and um, you know, we want to focus on celebrating the people who are doing the things that are uncomfortable and they're growing and they're trying and they're learning and they're failing forward and seeing successes on the other side of that and really celebrating, uh, you know, times like this when we're eager to learn and do together. Um, I really, really, I love this team. <laughs> I love our team. I love, you know, how well we work together. Um, I think having, inserting our power hours back in has been so cup filling and life-giving for me personally. Um, working together and celebrating wins together, big or small, um, has been huge. And so I just really appreciate the culture that you've all helped develop on this team. And it's something that I, I really value. And that was a huge reflection point for me of like, you know what? I love our team. Our team is awesome and works really well together. And I just love the personalities on our team. Like I just, I just enjoy you guys a lot. <laughs> um, and, uh, some things that I just jotted down at the very end were um, remember that we're working with people and keep the focus on relationships, that we're not just working with a bunch of numbers and a bunch of orders. These are people who are experiencing life in different ways, and we're the guide to take them along that journey, right? Um, and lean into discomfort every single day that will build confidence, right? When we start doing the hard things more often, the hard things get easier. And your purpose and vision is what's going to fuel your business. So revisit it often. Um, so it's very cool. I have I have that in the front of this. I just wrote it. <laughs> and so it's something I'm going to keep on my desk, hold it open. Um, but remember that it's the simple processes daily that move the needle. Like I was saying with the winning day or plexus day that we are all really learning to get real good at. And so that's why I'm so, so confident um, in the momentum that is really on the brink for our team, because that consistency is going to really compound. It's already starting to compound. Like I already see it bubbling up, right? It's already bubbling up to the surface and we're starting to see that spill over. Um, but I think it's the, it's the 60 day, it's the 90 day, it's the, you know, entire quarter of consistency um, that's really going to produce these huge results. And then we can turn around and guide all of our new people in doing the same thing and speaking that life into them and relating to them, empathizing with them, you know, guiding them and empowering them to do this with us. And that was sort of a big takeaway of the duplication thing that Amanda started talking about with the structure of a gold team. It was like, you can have like this. So it's like, you can have a million level ones and go gold. You can also have like a million level ones and go Ruby, right? But you could also have your four by four and go gold. And you can also have gold teams, right? And go ruby. And so the question becomes, who can I empower to do this with me? And not just seeking a runner, right? Who can I empower and equip and guide and lock arms with to do this with me? Um, and just remember that we learn by doing and not just by listening or watching training, get out there and do the things. Um, and some of the best people might already be in our back office, which is a, like, I guess that's like my last takeaway for tonight. Um, we had to go over some, like we had to get in our back office and write down a bunch of our level ones. Um, 
And I started doing it and I kind of got carried away. But anyway, you know who has a really pretty graphic of this is Kelly Alley. She did a wonderful job with this exercise. I wish she was here. <laughs> Her page looked perfect <laughs> and it was beautiful. Um, but it was like, literally go line by line. I know it was like this beautiful diagram. She did a fantastic job. Mine looks like chicken stretch and I have terrible handwriting. So um, it was writing down, you know, you're in the center starburst or spider web or whatever of all your level ones and who has people right and who might have been skipped over or who have I not asked about sharing recently who have I not talked to about sharing their results in the last two months you know and actually opening up your back office and scrolling like and writing down every single person's name and checking off I have asked them they have said no they have wonderful results or I haven't asked them in a while oh she might be interested in posting now you know we did that whole exercise of trying to pinpoint, okay, who, where is an opportunity? Who can I empower to do this with me? So that was cool. But um, I'll end with that. And if anybody has any comments or questions um, or anything that you heard that you stands out to you or you have questions about, I would love to hear it. Feel free to unmute yourself. I unmuted myself because there's a couple things I wanted to say. I don't know if this matters to anybody else, but you know, you hear Genevieve talk about like, don't be weird. And I think she, she kind of alluded to like people overthink their posts. Like they, like Ali was saying, it's gotta be the perfect post. I've got to say all the right words. And she's like, the simpler you keep it, the more normal it is. And so there were a couple of things she said that I thought were really like, oh, that's easy. She said, I always want, she goes, I always say my feelings won't be hurt if you don't like it. She's like, it's that simple, but she goes, that releases people to think, oh, I might not like it. And she goes, and it's comfortable. It's like, you know, you're sitting there talking with them. <laughs> Sorry. And then the other thing that I liked, because her idea with this one is that you're not making it weird in that you're not going, oh, you know, everybody shares. And if you get these three people and if you get the first one, you can get your mom and then your sister. And she goes, and it's really easy. And then you get this $300 and you're silver. And, you know, you're so excited and vomiting plexus all over them. And they're like, what the heck? all basically is silver right well her, her what she likes to use is most people like the idea of getting their products paid for not sure if that's anything that is, interests you and that she goes that's as simple as it is she goes then they can say yeah maybe i'd like to know and then you can talk to them but she goes you it's so simple like it gets into what is the guy's name ali the book like short little words i can't remember robert uh, somebody, Bill right? Jones. Okay. Anyway, she goes, it gets into the Phil Jones because she goes, you need to keep things short, simple. And she goes, a lot of times you don't get an answer because you've put way too many questions in the little statement you sent to him. She goes, you send a messenger this big and there's five questions in it. And she goes, they they just shut down and don't answer any of them. So I thought that was really interesting because to me, both of those things are really simple and honestly, very common to what I think people are used to hearing. So I wouldn't say that. And then the other thing that she really emphasized, it was during the time that she was talking about when, when Ellie was talking about the culture you want to build, whether it's in your team or your customers or whatever. She said, I want you all to think about this. She goes, I want you to every day be thrilled that you're in a company, company that asks you to dream. She goes, that's so important because a lot of companies don't do that. And she goes, and we are asking you every single day to dream and know that it's possible to change your life and everybody else's around you. So I thought that was really interesting. Those are such good takeaways. I love that. And I'm excited for, there was a portion that we didn't get to. It was about presenting compensation. Um, they had it saved for the very end. And then we went, well, I don't know if we went over on time or they decided to do the diamond panel instead. I'm not quite sure. I think maybe they were like, we have so many diamonds here. We yeah. should have them talk, you know? Yeah. Um, and they're going to have some type of follow-up call or resource or video or something yeah. about simplifying and presenting the compensation competently. And I am very excited to just see how that presented, like, what is the verbiage that they use? How do they walk through that? Um, I mean, I could sit down and explain it to somebody, no problem, but whether the way I explain it is like overly complicated or too jargony, I don't know. Like I haven't, it's not something I've practiced a lot of. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And I will, we can pass along, you know, that learning as well. Um, so they said, expect that, expect a video or a training or a call to be coming soon about um, presenting the compensation to people who are curious. 
Um, so yeah, that's coming too, and we'll we'll follow up with that. Um, Amanda, did you have any last comments? Um, I had one before, and I already forgot it, but I have a new one. So <laughs> um, you were talking about all the diamonds there, and every time I see diamonds like in on their posts and stuff or on the website and I'm looking at them like what is different about them like what what is that one thing that I'm missing that they have that will get me to be a diamond and then they all line up and they all start talking and they're just like normal human beings it always surprises me and I don't know why <laughs> so anyways I don't know that was something that also just like stuck struck me to my core just like they're just they're just human beings that you know knew the right things to do and they're teaching us those things to do at some point you just gotta do them I gotta do them I can't speak for you about that <laughs> oh, but yeah. it always surprises yeah. me <laughs> I know right and when some of them were saying their history or their you know job experience or their family structure or their struggles it's like there is every excuse in the book that you could think of that they you know would not do this or be too busy for this or you know not have the knowledge or not have the support or you know a lot of life got thrown their way or, you know, trauma or tragedy or whatever, right. They all have so much of that. Um, I mean, I think it was, yeah, Brenda Martin was a diamond that talked. She's got 11 children. She, I think, believe she might've homeschooled them, but check me on that. Um, and you know, it was a diamond. And then this gal stood up who was right behind us. I don't know what her rank was, but she was there at gold school. She had 13 children, 13 kids. And it's like, these people are doing the things and me with my two crazy boys. Like if I think I am like, <laughs> I'm so busy, <laughs> you know, like imagine no schooling that many children, you know, on top of that with like the age range that runs the gamut. Um, and just, you know, being a wife and homemaker and running your home and all that, I was just like, that's bananas. Um, and so I think that we can get, we can spiral in our own misery sometimes and not realize that, we might have all these things going on, but there are other people who are succeeding in spite of all of that and more. And so it's not impossible. It's just, are we clear on what we want and are we willing to go after it? And so, um, that was powerful to see all this like giant wall of diamonds up there and who have totally different stories, every single one of them, um, in different journeys, different lengths of their journey. Some went quick, some went, took a really long time to go diamond, you know, all this stuff and, and, um, you know, a room full of people like that. And that was super powerful. I think Amanda's right. There's no golden ticket. There's no one character trait. There's no one thing that any one of them has that any of us don't, you know, it's that they didn't quit. They didn't quit. They kept learning, kept growing, kept doing the things um, until they found something that started working. And then they turned around and taught people to do that too, you know? Um, so that, that's super powerful. That was a really, really cool way to end um, the night. Uh, all right. Does anybody have anything else before we jump off? Just something really quick, Ellie, that stood out. Um, the one thing about like people, like you're dealing with people and not numbers. For me, that is definitely like the forefront of my mind. And I think that's where I lose connection with online because, you know, my connections have all been personal in person and um, online is so hard for me because it's the opposite. I think that that's what they're thinking when I reach out to them. Like, oh, I'm, she's just reaching out for me for this. And it's so hard for me to break that. And I know that's one thing you talked about was mindset. So I don't know if you want to just jump on and elaborate a little bit on that because I'm still struggling and I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> Absolutely. I think a fear of rejection is very normal. Um, humans are social creatures. We want to be liked. We want to be part of a community. We don't want anybody to feel negatively about us, you know, all of that. Um, but there are so many different ways to look at this, but a couple of the ways are, I know that if you checked your heart position in that you are not viewing people as numbers. You know, I know that about you and, um, reflect on why, why you think that person would think that. Right. So it's like, I think we make up stories in our head. Like what about you connecting with them would make them feel that way. Right. Have you done something previously that make them feel that way? Probably not. Right. Um, and it's okay for us to be worried about what other people might think like that's a very normal thing that uncertainty is very uncomfortable um 
you'll probably never get rid of that. It's just whether or not you're going to see that as something that's going to hinder you in the progress of, in the, you know, journey of helping someone, you know, and most people are worried way more about themselves than they are about any of us. Just like we are worried about ourselves, right? People are thinking about themselves a lot more than we think they're ever thinking about us at all. And so I think that um, detaching from someone's readiness to be open to plexus is enormous because we have no idea the ins and outs of all their personal life and stuff. And I've had, I mean, just from speaking from personal experience in like the last eight years, I've had like maybe two people ever be kind of snarky with a response to me. Um, and it was usually because they had some type of bad previous experience that was not related to me whatsoever. Um, the vast majority are either not quite educated enough or not quite in a close enough relationship with me to, um, you know, start a conversation or be interested or whatever. Um, they just sort of need more time, um, or it's maybe not right for them. Right. Maybe it's just not their jam. Um, and that's totally fine. I don't know if you've ever heard the, uh, the, um, oh, there's so many waitress analogies, but one is with coffee and one is with dessert. How, like, if you're at a diner, the first thing the waitress is going to do is come around and offer coffee to everybody. And the waitress isn't worried about the diners hating her personally in the offering of the coffee. Like that's what she does. She's a waiter waitress that offers coffee and some people might want coffee and some people might not. Um, but she doesn't take offense to that. She's like, this is my job. And the service I offer is I offer coffee to people. <laughs> and so like, this is our service. This is our job. I offer wellness products to people. They may or may not want it. Um, same with like offering the dessert menu, right? They're like, some people might want dessert. Some people might not. Um, or some people might not want coffee right now, but maybe when they're done with their meal and they're done eating, they're like, oh, actually those people that are drinking coffee, that looks really good. And I can smell it. And I actually would kind of like waitress, can you actually, you know, come back and pour me a cup of coffee? So maybe it's just not the right time. Um, but it has nothing to do with the messenger, right? You're just the deliverer of the message. You're the guide delivering the service, the opportunity. Um, and I think remembering that and taking our own insecurities out of it is really the way to go. Um, but knowing that it's, it's normal, like you might not ever stop feeling a little bit uncertain or hesitant when reaching out to someone or making a new contact with someone. Um, and it usually, well, how did you find out about Plexus Ruby? What did you say? I missed this first half. How did you find out about Plexus? Mm -hmm. Through a nursing friend, actually. Oh, I and thought it Allie. was straight from Allie. <laughs> <laughs> How did she find out about it? How it did she find out about Allie. it? Allie. Me. Okay. Yeah. So I I personally have to remember those things. Yes. Yeah, that heard. almost all of my customers actually are from online interactions and they're some of them are like I've hardly interacted with them at all and all of a the sudden they come out of the woodwork or whatever and some of them I kind of actually know outside of online life and and so we at least have like an acquaintance and familiarity and mm -hmm. some of them I really know super well and we just also are friends online but like I do think that remembering that there are so many people that actually have found out about Plexus and have then chosen to utilize Plexus for our health and or business through purely online interactions. And that's totally okay. And it's totally okay. And there, and like, I feel personally, and I was just telling Becca this today, like there are a couple of gals that I don't actually know at all, but I just like, I adore them and I would love to be like really good friends in real life. It's probably not going to happen because we live kind of far away from each other. But like, I feel like we are friends. We did not know each other before I friend requested them because we had some common interest. 
and it doesn't feel weird. It's actually like a normal thing. It's just like going to the conference that I just was at. I didn't know anyone. I knew two people. And then when I showed up, there were a handful of people that I kind of knew, but I didn't know anyone else. And when I'm standing in line for the bathroom, I chat up the girl behind me and the girl in front of me. And I talk to the other girl when the sink doesn't work after we've gone to the bathroom and we're like getting coffee afterward or, you know, whatever. Like, it's like a normal thing to be interacting with people that you don't know in person and online too. It really is. It's like, if we don't make it weird, it's not weird. I don't make it weird, says yes, Jinbia. Don't make it weird. Don't make it weird. <laughs> yes, I love that. Thank you. And I, so- I agree. So that's like been something that I never expected to actually, I'm not somebody that has like had a lot of friends. Um, it just, I just haven't. Um, and I'm kind of an introvert. And so maybe that I actually gravitate more towards meeting people (laughs) online. It's more comfortable for me. Um, but I've actually made like really good connections with people that I enjoy talking to and the conversations just really natural. And I think, yep, just don't make it weird. Just talk to them as if you were meeting them in person. Um, and I think that like using those interest groups, like I, enroll so many people from interest groups now, um, probably mostly from interest groups. And it's because I'm connecting with people that I already have something in common with, right? Like it's, I'm not going to be able to build an authentic connection with somebody I have like nothing in common with, or we're just like vastly different. Um, but it can actually be really fun. I like tell people that I'm like, I really like actually meeting people online. That sounds weird, but you know what I mean? Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Becca, I really love meeting people online. No, I do too. It's fantastic. Preston's in the other room. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you think. <laughs> no, that's really great. And I, um, yeah, we've been talking about interest groups a lot lately, which Ruby, I don't know if we've um, talked about that much in detail, but that's a really wonderful way. Um, or like event groups, you know, it's a wonderful way to meet people with similar interests, you know, get into a community, a virtual community, um, and start meeting the people that are interested in the same things that you're interested in, you know, and start engaging in that space. Um, or maybe it is engaging with the account of a event or group or individual that you really like or enjoy, like a, you know, like an account on Instagram or something. Um, or maybe it's a Facebook group related to something specific and getting in there or in the comments and engaging with the content that shows up in there and really, um, building relationships within that is a really great way to kind of see if that is full of people that are your vibe. And then, um, in interest groups, you can post something yourself in there, post a question and see all the people that respond. And a lot of times people that are responding are the active people from the group that you might have seen engaging with anyway. And you can start replying to those comments and friend requesting those people. And that's a really good way to um, grow your network online too, with like just strangers that you probably wouldn't know otherwise. Um, So that's a really wonderful way to meet more people too. I know you were asking about actually like reaching out to people, but that's a good way to grow your network online. If you find it hard to like actually expand your network online. No, thank you. That helps so much. Awesome. Okay. One thing I was going to say, Ali, and I don't know if you already said this because I don't know how I got bumped off, but um, she actually said this at Gold School too, Ruby. She said that it upsets her when people say we aren't in sales because we are. And she goes, but you need to think of the fact that salespeople are there to serve and help people. And that could probably speak to your head and heart because of what you do. And she said, Think of yourself as a lifeguard. You're throwing a life ring to someone because you're trying to save them, help them. But she goes, then you have to remember, they have to catch that life preserver. So it's not just about about that analogy. That was such a good one. She's like, you are. It was. I really like that. I thought it's like so true because, you know, you are trying to help them. And by throwing them this lifeline, they, you can do that, but then they have to accept it too. But Sometimes it's that switching your mindset that makes a difference. 
And like, like I said, to me, with what you already do as a nurse, you're already, you know, taking care of serving, giving them that lifeline. So if maybe when you're reaching out to people online, you can think in those terms. Thank you. That helps so much. I love oh, that. Good. I love it. <laughs> good. Oh, good. Okay. What a good question that was, especially after gold school and all that. Um, that was great. What a wonderful discussion to end the night, guys. <laughs> Well, I'll let you guys go because it's getting late, but this was so wonderful. Thank you so much for hopping on. You learned a little something. Thanks, guys. Hey, everyone.